Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at a new release from Rails 7.1, which is support for Docker files outside of the box. So this is going to allow you to very quickly deploy your application by running a couple of commands. If we take a look at the pull request for this, we can see that there are three commands we'll need to run after we're on our production server, which will allow us to run this Rails app right out of the box. Now, if you're looking to run this in development, there's another way to do that. And that is the Rails docked uh, repo that DHH set up for us. And there we can see we create a uh, Docker volume with our Ruby bundle cache. We add an alias for docked, which is how the docked command works. It just runs the uh, Docker run command through here. And then that allows us to prefix all of our Rails commands with the docked command which then allows us to run all of this without needing to set up all of these dependencies, which as is pointed out here, uh, can be daunting for beginners. And then of course, if you wanna like alias all your commands, there's also instructions on how to do that. In our case, we're gonna be using the production version, which is what's gonna be built into a 7.1 app. And then we're gonna be deploying it to DigitalOcean to see uh, just how much time this actually saves. So I am gonna be running a timer while we run this. Uh, just to see how long this takes overall. I'm going to hit one to start this, and then we're going to do a Rails new. I'm going to call it video, and we're actually going to pass in dash dash main here to run off of the Rails 7.1 branch. So that just allows us to skip having to change all of these versions, and we just pull straight off of the main branch on Git, which is a very nice little shorthand that I just learned about while I was trying to get this to work. So once this finishes running, we can CD into our video. We'll do a Rails G scaffold post. We'll give each post a title. We'll skip the body because we're going to be using uh, Rails G action underscore text colon install to add action text, which means we are going to have to open up this uh, project in VS Code real quick or your editor of choice. I'm going to close all of this stuff from the dry run that I just did. And then we can come into our config and our routes.rb. Inside of our routes, we want to set the root to be the post controller and the index action. We then come into the post uh, controller. And at the bottom here, we can permit the body. And then in our post.rb, we can say this has rich text and we'll call it the body. So in our post, we permit there, we add the rich text in our controller, we permit it. And then of course, in our app views post form, we have to actually give the user the ability to add this uh, rich text. So we'll say this is a rich text area for the body. This will then allow you to do stuff like bold your text and highlight it. We can then come into the underscore post. And at the bottom here, we can just say this is where we uh, display it. Now I'm going to change this p tag to a div. I don't know why GitHub Copilot thought that's what we wanted and that should be good to go. We can now go ahead and do a Rails S to start our server. We can come over to the root of our application. It'll tell us to run our migration, so we press the button. Then we can uh, hopefully scroll in a bit. We can create a new post, we'll call it test, put in the words case right here, and then maybe we want to attach an image, which we'll use the Mattermost image from adding Mattermost to Rails that we did the other day, and there we go. So that's working as expected. Now, how do we actually deploy this? Well, to deploy it, we have to do a git add dot, git commit dash m we'll say this is the init commit and then at this point we need to actually create a git repo somewhere that we can clone from i'm gonna come over to my github profile and click new repository and then we'll say this is the rails underscore 7.1 underscore video and we can scroll down here and create this repository after this is created we click on ssh we grab the second option here to push an existing repo we right click in our terminal hit enter and then hit enter again that'll push it up and now we have this in our git repo now we can come over to something like digital ocean which is what i'm going to be using i'll have an affiliate link in the video description it'll give you two months free uh, and then they'll, they'll give me like 25 bucks or whatever if you end up paying for it but it gives you two months free of hosting which is a good way to test this out uh, and then in DigitalOcean, we can click on create, create a droplet. For the droplets, we're gonna grab the Ubuntu, uh, but we're actually gonna come over to the marketplace and we're gonna look for the Docker version because that adds Docker out of the box for us. We can then come down here to regular and go to the cheapo version. So we're gonna be running this on six bucks a month. We then have to add an SSH key, okay, that's been added. And now we come down here and we name this, I'll call this the Docker Rails 7.1 video or something just something to uh, make it a bit more clear what we're doing, uh, but it doesn't like these underscores, so we're actually gonna go with dashes. There we go. 
and then we can create this droplet. This will now begin the setup process for us. At this point, it's just gonna become almost like a, a time-lapse simulator while this tries to get everything set up. And then once this is set up, we'll SSH in, and we can uh, run our Docker commands from there. So at this point, it's just gonna become an issue of me editing out the wait, and you'll have the timer in the top right to see how long this takes with the complete setup process. Okay, it looks like that's done. Let's go ahead and let's copy this and try to SSH in as the uh, root at, and then the IP. It'll ask us to trust this, we'll say yes. And now we should be uh, hopefully logged in here. Now that that's done, all we need to do is clone our repo. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna grab the code, we'll grab the HTTP version, and then we'll just do a git clone for this repository. Go ahead and clone that. And now we'll see that in here we have the 7.1 video. So we'll just type CD rail and then we'll hit tab in here. What we can do uh, if we type LL, you'll see we have our Docker file and we can go ahead and run the Docker build dash T for the app. And that'll start the build process. Now, while that runs, let's go take a look at what that looks like over here on the side. We can come down to the Docker file and in the Docker file, we can see that we're just uh, setting the Ruby version. Uh, we're then running some apt installs and cleaning up some leftover files. We then set a working directory. We tell it how we wanna log, how we wanna serve assets, and the fact that we're running in production without development, because again, this is the production deployment version. Uh, so we don't wanna run this without, or we don't wanna run this with development, right? That's what the docked file is for. We then do our gem installs. We copy the application code into the Docker container, and then we run the rest of our setup with the pre-compilation, adding the secret keys, etc., etc. Once all of this is done, you'll then be able to access this on localhost port 3000. And then of course you would use like an Nginx setup to uh, reverse proxy from like, if you visit, I don't know, deanin.com to uh, point to like port 3000, right? So. Uh, essentially all of that's handled for us. This will run just like a regular Rails app, but it's all gonna be uh, built out of the box without you needing to figure out how to configure all of this on your own. Okay, and now that that's done, we can try to start this. So we're gonna have to create a Docker volume. Let me clear the console and do a control plus a bunch of times. So we're gonna run a Docker volume create for the app storage. That command will fire right away. And then we have our final command here which is our docker run command. So this is gonna run with the app storage being mounted to slash Rails slash storage. If you're familiar with the Rails app, that is the folder right here. So this storage is being mounted to app dash storage, which is the volume we created, which means that this volume lives on our actual Rails server. So when the Docker container saves stuff into our storage, that's gonna go onto our actual uh, server. So if we delete this Docker container, run a new one, et cetera, uh, it's gonna pull those files from the actual server itself, which means we don't have to worry about these going away every time we restart our Rails server. The only other thing we have to do is we have to uh, get our config master key, which we can just backspace out of here. If we come over to our app, our config and our master key, we can just copy that. We can come in here, we can right click to paste it, we can try to run this, and this will then try to start this rail server. This should go pretty quickly. We now need to grab our IP because I've completely forgotten what it was. We can come over to, I guess, uh, let's just open a new tab. We can come over here, we can go to that IP, we can hit enter, that will take us to the root of our application. Uh, I don't remember if we actually configured a root, uh, but we need to go to port 3000, that's my bad. And we're now in our uh, posts. So we can say this is a test post with, I don't know, some words here. We can try to attach our Mattermost image again. And maybe we bold this text. We hit create post. This gets created. And we can see right here, uh, it's working as intended. Now, if we want to, what we can actually do uh, at this point, uh, maybe we could stop the server, maybe not. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop this. We could do something like a, um, I don't know, let's go into nano for our uh, app slash views slash posts slash index.html.erb. And we'll just change this to the word, I don't know, uh, testing something RQ for real quick. 
hit control O to save that, control X to exit. And now if we want to, what we can do is we can try to run those commands again real quick. We can try to rebuild our app and you'll see that the second time, because it doesn't have to go through that entire setup process again, uh, it's gonna be a much quicker build than the previous time. Okay, so that's already done. That was a couple seconds there. Uh, we do still have our volume, so that's not an issue. The only other thing we have to do is we have to rerun our command with our uh, secret key. So we rerun this. This will then start the server again. And you could see that iterating on something like this is gonna be a lot quicker uh, the second and third time around because it doesn't have to install all those dependencies. And we do still have our existing posts, so that's also cool, but now we're updating it very quickly. So in under about 20 minutes, you can have your application fully deployed. Of course, you probably wanna have Git on your like remote server, for example, uh, but you know, I think here we had, a, uh, we had the ability to run Git. Uh, we just didn't set up our SSH keys because I couldn't be bothered. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what Rails 7.1 has in store for us with these uh, new Docker commands. They are very useful, very powerful, uh, and hopefully they will save us all a bunch of headache when we try to set up a new app for the 20th time. But yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found it helpful, uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.